Nazim Pakistan contest 2012 Pakistan Rugby. We are team number 16-5 from Delhi Technology University, Delhi. Uh, this is our topic. That is ultra low power and cost effective wireless instrumentation and telemetry support system for solar mobility applications. Myself, Rohit Gupta, and this is my friend Jaspi. Basically, we are going to demonstrate our own prototype of an ultra low power cost effective wireless instrumentation and telemetry support system for solar mobility application. Now, what is the solar mobility application? Uh, as these days, uh, cost of fuel is increasing as well as the uh, pollution in the environment is increasing. So, solar mobility applications are basically those vehicles which, which run on the power harnessed from the sun. Uh, we uh, both are a part of a solar car team in our college. So, uh, we have been making these cars for about two years now. And uh, this is the module we developed for this, this solar power of ours. But all the operating parameters are very critical. The uh, power is coming from the array, it is being stored in the battery, and the battery is being used to run the motor. So, everything should be in equilibrium. Now, to manage this equilibrium, we need to know where is the equilibrium. So, using this uh, telemetry support system, we guide the driver about the equilibrium point and help him achieve the optimal equilibrium point. The main idea of the project was to create an interface which will allow to <coughs> multiple nodes, node A, node B, node A, node A, wireless to two way administration and enable the data acquisition and control of various uh, uh, control units on these nodes uh, via PC GUI. Uh, the UI uh, for the purpose of creating using visual C sharp. That's why here this is the prominent actually tool in this project. Uh, we have used MC430 to 553 IM20 microcontroller and MC430 E2452 IM20 uh, another microcontroller for LCD interfacing and MC430 D2231 also for uh, LCD interfacing on our uh, node B and LM25 temperature sensor a dilated transistor uh, array ULN 280C ELF 430 RF 2500 target board uh, TS M50 MO5 uh, 5C 5 volt regulator L2950 3.3 volt regulator and TPS 7130 QB 3.3 volt very low dropout regulator and also the software that we use for the project are Photomobile Studio version 5.1 uh, from Texas Instruments IR Workbench, uh, VGC 2010 for creating the PC GUI and CAT uh, software for creating our schematic of uh, PC. And now we will proceed, proceed with our demonstration. So what we have here is a unit that we made during the initial series of the contest for testing and evaluation purposes. The final unit that we made for the contest will be discussed later by Rohit. Now let us focus on this one. So what we have here is MFC 430G2452 microcontroller for LCD interfacing, MFC 430G2553 IN20 microcontroller for uh, which is uh, linked to this EZ4 hit target board via UART interface. We also have some voltage regulator in this circuit. Uh, this is uh, ALM7806 voltage regulator and this is TL750MO5C a 5 volt voltage regulator. Also, this one is TPS7133 QP 3.3 volt very low dropout regulator. Also, uh, since this was made for just testing purposes, so we have uh, four input channels here and four control channels here. This can be extended up to 12 channels, and on the uh, we also have some onboard onboard sensors here. Uh, on channel one, we have a HI300 uh, hall sensor, and uh, on channel two, we have uh, a LDR and on channel 3 we have a LM35 temperature sensor. So now we will proceed with the demonstration. So the square wave input to this uh, either 400 target board is provided by this control is the MSC430 graphic user interface that we developed for controlling GPIO pins on this MSC430 launch pad. Now as you can see we have turned node B on as well. So I am now going to connect node A and node B to my uh, a laptop and we will see how the system actually works. Also know that these two nodes have been connected to my, uh, the PC wirelessly using this uh, EZ430 target board along with the debugger module. 
so now uh, i'm going to select my com port com 51 connect so these two uh, the system has now been connected now i'm going to turn channel 1 and channel 2 on and i will assign uh, these two node 1 only node 1 or node a so the value on the channel 1 uh, input is currently 3 uh, which is basically the input voltage to this hall sensor now we'll bring the opposite pole of this magnet to this hall sensor and we will see how the value changes so as you can see the value is now dropped to somewhere around 0 volts and again it has been it did jumped up to 3 volts also the channel 2 on this node A is connected to this uh, LDR and now we will uh, in reduce the intensity of the light falling on this LDR and see how the value change. So as you can see the value is now on channel 2 is now reduced again. So it is increased again. So uh, as you can see the channel 1 is linked to control panel 1 and channel 2 is linked to control panel 2 so I am going to select some multiply constants first and uh, we will see how the control units actually work say I have selected a multiply constant of 16.5 uh, on channel 1 I am going to assign it to node 1 again and a multiply constant of 19.8 on channel 2 and again I am going to assign it to node 1 only so as you can see the value uh, values has been multiplied by the appropriate the multiply constant that I have set which and these uh, this value is indicated by these analog meters as well. So uh, basically on these control panels we have three modes of control. Mode 1 is basically switching the uh, unit uh, control actually control unit on and off by these buttons mode 2 and mode 3 are basically selecting the cutoff suppose we want to create a system in which uh, we are reading a temperature value and above some temperature uh, cutoff we need to switch some unit on say a cooling fan or some uh, other related unit so we can select a cutoff from these modes so let us first select some cutoffs say i am going to select 10 also let us say we are going to control uh, port uh, 1 control channel from uh, port 1 uh, input channel only so from n1 to n1 now i'm going to select mode 2 in mode 2 if the input value falls below this cutoff value the actuated control channel will be turned on so i'm going to bring the other pole of this magnet to the whole sensor again and we will see what happen so as you can see uh, the activation signal has been sent uh, because this value that is 0 0.194 is uh, obviously less than the cutoff value 10 and this LED as you can see is turned on. So I have now reset the entire system and we will see one more example. So I am going to connect these two nodes node A and B to my laptop again and I am going to turn the channel 1 and 2 on and this time as well I will assign these channels to node 1 only and I'm going to select the scaling factor of say 15.43 on channel 1 and assign to node 1 channel 2 assign to node 1 so uh, in the previous example we saw how we can control a control channel on uh, on the same node by the input value obtained on that node only this uh, this time we will uh, uh, control this node 2 with the input value that we obtain from this whole sensor of the node 1 uh, basically we will see how we can uh, link multiple nodes uh, in the system using the GUI only so I am going to select node 2 here and say first of all let us select some uh, cutoff value set I am selected 13 this time and mode 2 again so I am going to bring the opposite pole of this magnet to my whole sensor and we will see uh, what happens so as you can see the value is now reduced and an activation signal has been sent uh, by the control panel 1 to this control panel 2 and we can see this LED is now on which, uh, which indicates that the control signal has been generated. So this is how we can control 
multiple nodes in a system uh, using the same UI uh, and as you can see it is uh, very easy all you have to do is select the appropriate uh, constants and appropriate nodes uh, uh, you select you have to select the node from which you uh, want to obtain your signal and node for to which you want to send your control signal and that's all you have to do so this was the main purpose of creating this whole system that it should be easy for the user to uh, select the parameters and finally make this thing work so now Rohit will uh, demonstrate the system that we finally made uh, basically we converted this whole system into a booster pack and now Rohit will explain how that unit actually works oh, thank you The board that we showed you earlier was developed only for demonstration purposes so, uh, because it's a bit neater to show it on that book of board. But for the ac actual use in the car, we made booster packs that can be fitted onto the launch pad. And uh, this provides us a uh, very compact means of telemetry. As you can see, uh, we have a RF module plugin over here where we connect the EZ430 module. It has onboard voltage regulators for 12 volt, 5 volt, 3.3 volt, and ground. Uh, so we can connect a variety of uh, sensors. Uh, there is also a Darlington, which which is being soldered as an SMD component on the bottom side. This is used to select the uh, loads that we want to switch. Like uh, in a car, we have a uh, headlights fans for cooling systems so for that purpose we use the Darlington it has a 500 milliamps per channel the two channels can be clubbed to get a higher current rating sometimes uh, this fits onto this completely there it goes this is the trans, the trans receiver booster pack we also made a sensor sh booster pack which can be fitted onto this uh, so that uh, all the sensor needs are met in there is a 5 volt connector to drive the LCD on it which comes from the which comes from the parent board goes like this so here we have the complete module the LCD fits over here and voila we have the complete board you can see it is very compact it can be placed anywhere in the car uh, this is a PCB made out of FR1 material